cake like this, and Tyrell is baking that they do for us, so please enjoy the uh, goodies back there. They do so much for us. <coughs> it's all volunteers, so we really couldn't do it without them. We really appreciate it. So thank you, my friends. So I'd like to introduce Eileen Reed. Um, she is going to help us to learn how to simplify, <laughs> simplify, I'm say, simplify our lives, be more with less, and I know we could all really use some of that. We are looking forward to our presentation by Eileen Reed. Thank you. Great to see everybody. I will try and keep my level nice and high. I kind of am a shouter. Um, but if you're having trouble hearing me in the back, just kind of raise your hand and uh, let me know. Um, and I definitely would love for this to be interactive. Um, ask questions as we go along. We'll have a little fun. We've got a couple of uh, little surprises planned for you. So um, again, Eileen Reed. I'm based out of Linfield. My company is Simplify with Eileen. And I am very fortunate to have my profession be my passion. Um, so I believe, well, organizing and simplifying, it's really not about a life of less. And it's not about a life of more. It's about a life that's just right for you. Figuring out just what's enough. Um, and uh, a couple things that I believe in. So I believe in a simplified life. I believe that less really is more. Um, I believe to, that um, I just choose to unburden myself from all the perceived perceptions and expectations and keeping up with the Joneses and uh, all that kind of ugh, negative drag and clutter. Um, I believe that it's never the thing that matters. We're going to talk about that quite a bit more uh, today. Um, I also have chosen to spend more time, or spend less time making a living and more time making a life. And I'll tell you how I arrived at that um, realization. Um, so, and simplified and organizing, it's not so much about getting rid of stuff. Some people think I just pull up with a dumpster and make you get rid of your stuff. It's not about getting rid of stuff. It's really about making space for the stuff that matters. And that's where we really have to figure out what matters. Um, but I didn't always believe this. Um, uh, when I uh, got out of high school, I wanted to be a French major. And I was convinced by others that business would be a much more practical route. So after graduating college with my business degree, um, I found myself like immediately swept up into the corporate machine. Um, I was a very successful salesperson for a software and IT consulting company. I made sick money. Mm -hmm. Like I six figure year over year. I won awards. I went on trips. My clients loved me. Um, and my husband and I, we bought all the stuff you're supposed to buy to make you happy. Instead, where I found myself was um, I had TMJ. I would grind my teeth at night so much that I had to wear an appliance every night. Um, I got pneumonia. I suffered from killer migraines. I had three trips that I can remember to my doctor where I would have a racing heartbeat. And I would be EKGs and wear those little Holter monitors for a couple of nights and they track it. Um, I just, I was losing touch with friends. And I thought it was all normal. That's just what happens when you're that busy. So, then my dad uh, got sick. He had to have emergency surgery, and very quickly he ended up in ICU. And he's got a trach, he can't talk. My mother is completely beside herself. And there I am, saying, Mom, just give me five minutes. I, I just have to take this client call. <clears throat> and I will be right back in ICU after I just set up this interview for this consultant. Like, it was insane. I, I didn't set any boundaries, and I just allowed the world and work and life, all that crap to come crashing in, 
it invade a time when I really needed to be focused on what was really important. So, I quit my job. After 20 years, I was at the highest of my high. And I didn't have to wear my appliance anymore. And I no longer had racing heartbeat. Oh, I also had super wicked high blood pressure. <coughs> rock star. Rock star blood pressure right here. Um, connected with old friends. Um, simplified my life. Found that I could make a profession from my passion. Now, I'm not saying to any of you that you should just go quit your jobs and like sell all your stuff. <laughs> not at all. But what I do suggest to you all is that you listen to those whispers of your heart and you pay attention to the signals that your body tells or screams at you and consider simplifying and consider really <coughs> focusing on what's important and you know the funny thing is is all this health stuff that was happening to me that wasn't the wake up it was when I wasn't able to be there for my family. That was my, you know, defining moment, wake up call, aha, whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of how I've arrived here. Um, I started my company at age 52. You can do it, you know. And um, and as I said earlier, I I am just deliriously happy that my passion is my profession. Uh, for me, Sunday evenings are like, yeah, here comes Monday. But when I was working in the corporate, uh, are you kidding me? How do these Mondays keep happening? Um, so, just that's a little bit about the aha and sort of how I came to be uh, where I am. Uh, I have notes because I have the worst memory of anyone you'll ever meet. Um, what I'd like to do now is like, this is all about like kind of simplifying and simplicity and simple. And I have an exercise that I'd like to sort of help us, um, help illustrate this. I need three volunteers, please. I won't make you do anything scary. Okay, thank you. No. Did you say anything? No. Awesome. How about someone? All right. All right, don't open them. Don't open them. Um, it's super simple. All right, get, get, make sure you have a pen. What the exercise is, is there are a series of numbers. All I want you to do is, without taking your pen off the paper, connect one to two, two to three, three to four, etc. As soon as you're finished, <coughs> just yell, done. Do you hear your, 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 I've lost you. Okay, I can see you. <laughs> this isn't simple. No, the numbers are on the page. Once you open up, you'll see a bunch of numbers. Simply without, just take your pen. One to two, two to three, three to four. All right, ready, go.
Sorry, Joy. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. So who finished? You finished your number two. Okay. So here's number two. Oh. Ah. So the the numbers are organized. Sweet. Still the same number. Twenty-five numbers. Twenty-five numbers. You see how much easier it is when things are just a little bit organized? Like, okay, the first line are all the boots, and the second line are all the jackets, what have you. And then our third one. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the green. I'm ramping on that one. Good job. Good job. So even simpler because there's less. Like maybe you didn't need 20 parka jackets of every size and vintage. And maybe half the gloves don't even have the matching gloves. So just a little illustration of like what I mean by simple and how less can be more and you're, you can get out the door faster and you're more productive and just life is better. So. The thing is, the world we live in, our culture, our society, doesn't make that easy for us at all. There's just too much of everything. And there is such a thing, like even a good thing, sometimes too much of a good thing is too much. Like, oh, too much chocolate cake, I don't know. Like, then you get a stomach ache and you weigh what you want to weight. Um, so our world is saying big, big is better. More is better. Get the newest. Get the best. Um, you know, it's got to be perfect, right? Ugh. Perfection does not exist, P.S. You will drive yourself absolutely insane chasing the elusive ghost of perfection. It doesn't exist. Just go for, like, great. Great, okay? Perfect, no. Um, so here are some frightening stats about just how our world and our culture and our society is too much. We consume twice as many material goods as we did 50 years ago. That's a short amount of time to double our consumption. In that same period, 50 years, the average United States home has tripled in size. Bigger is better. There are, in most, the average home has more televisions than there are people living in the home. Ah, that knowing, nervous, she's got me laugh. <laughs> yes. 25% um, of people with two-car garages do not park their car in the garage because it's a warehouse. All right. Does anybody get their cars in their garage? Anyone? Come on. Yeah. All right. Both of them? <laughs> now, guess what is the fastest growing sector of commercial real estate today? Storage. Storage. Yeah. Self-storage. There are more self-storage units in the United States than there are Starbucks. McDonald's, Wendy's, yes, gross. Um, and one out of ten Americans rent self storage, and 65% of those renters have a garage. 47 have an attic. 33% have a basement. So what does that tell us? No, like not even like no quarters wouldn't even rent an offsite. Quarters would just want to buy You know? Yeah. Um it's just we have too much. Our culture is just saying more and more and more. So we'll let's walk through like examples of this. Oh, I have a headache when I'm looking at that. Alright. It's Times Square, but it could be any city. And every one of our senses are assaulted here. Sound, <coughs> smell, sight, vision, touch, just people just walk everywhere. Um, and it, what, it, what it does is it's chaotic. It's overwhelming, deafening, uh, distracting, stressful. Your anxiety just goes up. I know there are some city people who just, mm, they thrive on it. 
it's not the norm. It's not most of us. And then let's watch a little TV. Okay. <laughs> right? Where do you even look? <laughs> My husband is, he's the ticker guy. He's always looking at the ticker. And I'm staring at the, the biggest thing. Yeah. And my husband's like, hey, what'd you think about that? I'm like, what do you mean? The guy's still talking. What do you mean? He's like, there's a thing along the bottom. I can't look at that. My eye and like the, the average brain, need, there's two, it's multiple stimuli. It, 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 it distracts you. You're not able to focus. So you're not really kind of absorbing any one message that's coming here. It's just all going at you. TMI. Right? Okay. Too much stuff. I can say almost without exception, maybe one of my clients in this little Arlington house, but almost without exception, my clients have enough space. They have too much stuff. Like, that's the reality. An example, one of my clients in Medford, uh, just a man and a woman uh, living together in a condo, and she has six colanders for strangers. <coughs> you know, six. And she can justify every one of them. Well, <laughs> this one's got the handle. This one has a spout. This is medium size. This big one is plastic, so it's good for cold things. And then I've got the big metal one, which is good for the hot things. And I just wonder, like, I don't know. Like, do you need the perfect tool for every conceivable application? Or could you maybe su survive with maybe a large one and a small one? Because the cost of having the six is it takes a lot of space. And then you're on, not able to store things that maybe are more important than six strainers. Just a suggestion. And like I never tell, I just ask questions to sort of help people sort of come to their own conclusion. I'm not saying, listen, do the limit. You know, in any organizing book, you'll see two strainers are the limit, so which four are you going to give up? That's not how it goes. And I find this a lot with like spices and Tupperware and baking, like the large cupcake thing, the small cupcake, the oval cupcake thing, like, wow, many cupcakes, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, the caveat is there are some people, Karen, who's a, a clearly a prolific baker, like you're, that's your thing. So yeah, but a lot of my clients who have all these gadgets and every spice, like you can't even pronounce them, and, and they're hard, like they don't even shake. <laughs> they're so hard. Um, you know, so you just have to kind of pick it. Pick it. Now, let's see what this one does to y'all. <laughs> so please go onto my Facebook page, Simplify with Eileen, and you will see the after shot of this playroom. It's awesome. How many kids? Awesome, awesome. And mom was like right in there with me. She was so good. But she had two kids. And they would come down to this game. Two kids. They were so overwhelmed and overstimulated when they came in. Like, imagine being two feet tall and, and, and landing in there. Like, you don't, even what, you don't even know what to do, where to go. You can't even see what there is. We've got the aerial view, so we, we, don't, we don't think about what it's like for the little dude. Um, so the choices can become paralyzing. And I found this article. It was a study done by the University of Toledo in Ohio, and they invited in 36 toddlers, and they had them play for a half an hour in a room with four toys. They had them play for a half an hour in a room with 16 toys. Now, I don't think any of us are going to be too shocked to find that they were very <coughs> overstimulated, distracted, uh, they didn't have a good time in the, in the 16 toy room. In the four toy room, um, they engaged in longer periods of play with a single toy. So like they really used the thing. Mm. They played with it, not just pick it up, uh, here's a pink plastic thing, blah, blah. Um, 
and it allowed better focus to explore and play more creatively and more socially. So like they played with the other toddlers instead of just sitting in a mass of toys. So, interesting. Um, <coughs> so the idea of having it all. We talked a little bit about this when we just were having a conversation about the prom. So the bar is set so artificially. We see Mariah Carey's claws and we're like, yeah, I need like four thousand. Um, we think we need the perfect bag and the expensive shoes. I don't even know how to say those ones, like Monomal Blanca, because I kind of butcher it. Like, I don't know. Um, and a closet full of like designer leggings. And what, what a closet like this also does is, it, is it's a thing called decision fatigue. And you fling open your closet in the morning and it's just jam crammed with stuff. Like you are, you're stuck. You're, 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 you're unable to make a good decision like, or it's, it's hard to decide because the choices are so, so plentiful. And here's the truth. We wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. It is the honest to God's truth. Like you've got your face, you've got your go-tos, you know, you're always wearing that cute gray sweater over there, right? And, you know, so the rest of the stuff is just completely in our way. It's distracting us, it's hiding stuff. Um, and in your heart of hearts, I bet you know that that's true for you. <laughs> Super Walmart, Costco, big box stores, big, big lots, jumbo, giant. So if you know, if you have a family of six or seven, like I get it, you probably need like a lot of toilet paper. Um, but remember our stat earlier about the self storage boom? I mean, like you need a warehouse just to get the forty thousand pack of paper towels. And now it's like, where do I put it? Do I put it downstairs and then I forget about it and then I go buy more? And then, like, you know, it's just, um, it's, it's, it, there's no surprise that storage and, and people's basements and attics and garages are just jam crammed. You know, do you go shopping every week? I do. Do you guys normally go every week or is that, yeah, pretty much like, I go every day. <laughs> so you're cool. Um, so, you know, the amount of backup, you know, everybody needs a backup. I get it, you don't want to be caught short without anything. But a backup might be like, I don't know, two extra rolls of paper towels in case you didn't get, you didn't get shopping for two extra days. Um, but if we just resist the temptation to like overbuy, um, and this really comes into play, especially with food, like the giant box of multi-variety granola bars. And then nobody in the house is going to eat the, uh, the apple ones. So those all go to waste. And then, you know, it's just, and then you have a few, and then you're on to, like, sort of the next thing. Your taste change. So just try to resist the temptation to <coughs> overbuy and overstore, because it's always at the expense of something. Also, um, the New York Times did an experiment where they pre prepared the same exact dinner for 12, two groups of 12. For one group, they went and they shopped at like, you know, Stop and Shop or just a regular old store, a grocery store. And for the other group of 12, they, st they shopped at like a Costco or a um, big, big box store, a Sam's or something. And what they found is that the cost per meal was exactly the same. Like, what? No way. It was exactly the same. The difference was, for the ones that they like, went to stop and shop, they had exactly what they needed. With the big box store, they had a whole bunch of leftovers. But the cost for the meal was the same. So it's like, ugh, do you want to like have to store, I mean, maybe you do, but, you know, storing all the leftovers, and then they get to the back of the refrigerator, and nobody knows what that furry green thing is growing out <laughs> there. And, you know, have you really saved money? You're welcome to jump in any time. <laughs> all right, and this is an interesting one, too. 
our office, our workplace. So the thinking was, when this whole cube farm thing came up, was that it would foster collaboration and better communication and hopefully equal better productivity. The truth is, um, the noise level is extremely distracting for workers. Productivity goes down. Um, noisy interruptions can drain their productivity. Um, background noise is distracting. All the overstimulation, the lights, the phones, the conversations, da 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 da, da decreases productivity. Um, no privacy. Um, they, they found that, studies have found that a sense of privacy can improve job performance, and by depriving employees of it, you actually kind of decrease their ability to be productive. Um, and also, absenteeism due to sickness. Big old cootie farm right there. <laughs> all those germs and all those things are just spreading around. Yes? Who did that study? This was... Uh, a February 2017 article by Business.com. Business.com. February two, two, 2017, February last year. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just our world has become more invasive. It's just, you know, oh, it's like right there in your face. So, um, we are a culture of, I think we've talked about excess, the bigger, better, more perfect, newest, best. Um, and um, we're also a culture of instant gratification, right? Go on now, right. click to add to cart. Um, it's going to be here tomorrow with crime. Awesome. <laughs> you know, uh, you need money, Shoot, just drive up to the ATM. There <laughs> you have it. Um, if, you're, if your like, phone starts like spinning or taking more than three seconds for Facebook to launch, you're like, what is, what is going on with me? I mean, like, we're so impatient. <coughs> Everything has to be instant. Gone, long, gone is like the sort of like the art of lingering and just, you know, being. Um, we also are a culture of great waste. Anyone care to venture a guess as to what percentage of food in the United States goes to waste. 60. Hmm? 60. <gasps> ding, ding, ding. Look at this front row. Did you see this? No? Yeah. 40 percent, according to the National Resources Defense Council, 40 percent of the food in America goes uneaten. It either spoils at the source, the farm or the field, or in the distribution channel, the trucks, the warehouses, or on grocery shelves, or the back of the fridge. Back of the fridge, back of the pantry, <laughs> underneath the, yeah, in that cavernous cupboard that no one's actually ventured into in many years. Yeah, it does. And I, I do like a lot of pantries and, and kitchens with clients, and if they've got a big island, that's my favorite. Because we pull everything out. That's what you gotta do, you gotta pull everything out, Plop it on the island and start sorting. And then you see this like mound of nuts and, and, and dried fruit and stuff. Like it's a mound. And it's come from all reaches of the pantry. And then we start looking at expiration dates. <laughs> and I have literally had people in, almost in tears, just so mad at themselves for the waste. And like, the intention is good. You're trying to be a great parent, and you're trying to provide options and, and good food for your family. Like, the intentions are great, but man, we just overshoot it. And so much goes to waste. The bags and the bags, and the husband comes home. And it's just, you know, and then the kids are like, oh, sorry, I didn't see all those, like, Cheetos. And those bags. So, Again, just if we just sort of like pause and try and dumb it down a little bit and simplify it and and think about what what's enough. So all these shifts in the way the world is working and the world is coming at us, it's creating these beliefs. Like it's telling you bigger is better. And 
you know, it's telling you you need the newest. You have an iPhone 5. Mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> and like, the 8's out now, right? Um, so, you know, all this stuff really kind of, it's in <coughs> with what my message is. Um, and, and then you have to, to figure that, you know, all these, you know, we believe all these non-truths. And what we need to do is just sort of reframe, reshift our beliefs. Because the only way to change a habit is to change your belief. <laughs> so, an example. If I believe, as the Dairy Association tells me that milk does the body good, I'll create a habit of having milk with my cereal and a glass of milk with dinner. And if I believe that, you know, recycling is important, I'll develop a habit of, you know, putting the paper here and putting the plastic here and, and recycling because I believe that, you know, that's, that's something that's a belief I hold. So if we're going to ever have a prayer of changing some of these habits, we really have to get to the core of it and frame our beliefs. So what I'd love for you guys to do is take just a couple of minutes for the people in your row. I'd love you to talk <coughs> for about four or five minutes together. What are some of the beliefs you've been sold, you've been told all your life about stuff and why you hang on to stuff? Because there's a lot of reasons, there's a lot of beliefs. So just take a few minutes. You'll start to hear the room like really, really good. Okay?
already created some slides for many of these. So <coughs> let's see what we think. And again, the idea is to let's stop believing the non-truths that society and culture and all the manufacturing folks out there are trying to get us to believe. And let's, let's adopt a simpler <coughs> belief that is going to serve us, our life, and our space today. Okay. You might need it someday. I'm here to tell you folks, seven days in the week, not one of them is called someday. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. And if you are holding on to things that, I don't know, maybe someday, perhaps, could be used, um, it's just, it's not practical. So if it's not serving you in your life today, let it go. Now, I know, I know. This works for things like the 14 flashlights in the house. I mean, you live on two floors, maybe maybe you need two, maybe three. But 14 flashlights, probably don't. You know, maybe they could be donated and somebody else could actually use them. Um, the foot spa that, some, that you got in 2002, because you're like, oh man, this thing is great and I'm going to use it and it's still in the box. You're not going to use it someday. You haven't used it since 2002. Still in the box, still in the cellophane. Donate it. Sell it. Just give it to somebody in your family, you know, your sister in law. Like, but now, because the, it's telling you. And, and the other thing is, too, it's sort of like, okay, thank you, thing in the box that I never opened, because you taught me a lesson. I'm going to stop doing those impulse as seen on TV things. You know? Um, so someday, someday. Now, some exceptions might be the arrow bed. You got one, you're going to have. You maybe use it every year or maybe every two years, but it's a good thing to have, and there's only one of them. So it's not just that, you know, that's a someday thing that kind of makes sense. I'm not like totally um, callous when it comes to this stuff. But um, you really just can't be expected to warehouse all this stuff for the future. You know, maybe when Sarah moves out, she'll need that <coughs> You know, don't hang on to someday. Live for today. Your house is just big enough to store things for today. And also, there's a lot of life yet to come. So there's going to be more stuff coming in. Don't worry. <laughs> so, live for today. Um, it's still in good shape. Someone can use it. Now, Virginia, that's a perfectly good chair. Do you want it? Now, maybe you got one of these things that was part of a set when you got married 100 years ago, and it's down in the basement, and it's doing nobody any good just down there. Donate it. Get it out. Let it serve its purpose. If it really is in good shape, let it serve its purpose and not just sit in your basement collecting spiders. By the way, spiders love clutter. And I hate spiders, so that's a big motivator for me. Um, so, um, you know, and, and a lot of us now, in a, a lot of us are of the generation that our parents, you know, when we got our first apartment, like, sure, I'll take the free table, Mom, absolutely, you know? And it was, like, gross. And I'll take those mismatched chairs because, you know, we just didn't have any money. But these days, mm-mm, these millennials, they're all like, I'm on the Pottery Barn, the Crate and Barrel, the Ikea. Um, they don't want anything mismatched or gross. So, don't hang on. <laughs> you just want the family silverware. Oh my goodness, no, it's such a tragedy. It is. It's not dishwasher safe, forget it. I have to like polish it? No way. And, um, you know, just like, yeah, it, it's, it's a shame. It really is. I feel with so many downsizers, seniors who are downsizing. And it just rips their heart out that nobody wants the china, the glassware, the Roy Hill dining room set with a matching hush. The thing was meant to outlive us all, <laughs> built to last, and so nobody wants it. It like weighs a thousand pounds. But the silver, the, the only thing I can say about silver is that it's, you can get a lot of money for it as meltdown. And if nobody's going to use it, and you can get like $1,500 for it, because silver is a really good price traded, 
you know, then it can help maybe finance something that, you know, you're moving on to as a down payment on your, like, new assisted living place or something like that. You know, you just have to say, how is it going to serve me and my life today? And if it's just going to be sitting in a drawer in that Roy Hill dining room, posh that nobody wants, what's the point? Um, okay, so again, if it has done its service for you and nobody wants it, then off it goes to serve somebody else. <coughs> we talked about this. It's too expensive. I can't get rid of that. I'm here to suggest that if it was expensive, that does not mean it's valuable. That's the does not equal. <coughs> expensive does not equal valuable. You should, the value is what value it brings you. Who cares what pay, price you paid in the past? That's the past. You'll never get it back. Um, you could have something that costs 12 cents. And it's the most amazing thing ever. And you use it constantly. And you can't imagine life without it. And you could have one of those $4,000, oh, I don't know, treadmill, elliptical, <laughs> exercise bike in your bedroom that you're never on the treadmill or the elliptical or the exercise bike. And all it does is collect dust and clothing. <laughs> yes? So what do you do when one spouse sees the light and one <laughs> for somebody else, but if it's a shared space, at least inspired by making like your nightstand awesome and your side of the closet phenomenal and your side of the floor, nothing on it. Inspire, lead by example, um, suggest, and you know, slightly over time, you know, there are, you, you can't win every battle, you have to pick your battle. So maybe his side or her side is not the way you would want it. And maybe you agree that in the common areas, at least for the love of, for the sake of the marriage, honey, <laughs> let's have the kitchen and the living room just be really clutter free. Like, you know, if, can we agree on just those two areas? Like that's all <clears> I'm looking for. And the kids, like the teenagers, if you, the door, if the room has a door on it, awesome. Because you, you know, that, that might be a battle you ain't going to win. You know, again, you inspire, you incent, you um, lead by example, but you can't want something more for somebody than they want it for themselves. And, okay, sometimes, P.S., you can also play little tricks. And you can, maybe, maybe he says, you know, oh, those are my, you know, that's my favorite, like, you know, baseball shirt or whatever. And you take it out of rotation. Maybe you don't throw it away yet. Maybe it's just sort of hidden. And you ask, you know, after five months, you say, hey, how's that uh, baseball shirt doing? Huh? You been wearing it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Really? Because I've hidden it for five months. So you didn't even miss it. You know, so sometimes, you know, again, you have not um, broken trust by getting rid of it. But, you know, just an example. See, you like, you didn't even miss it. Like, life, the world continued spinning on its axis. It was awesome. And you didn't even miss it. So, and then if it's a really expensive thing, like let's say it is a treadmill, I mean, there are places, um, reconditioned exercise <coughs> places where you can kind of uh, uh, play it again, like type things where you can try and sell it, or sell it on one of the um, Facebook place. yard sale, on uh, virtual yard sale sites. Those are great. Free cycle if you wanted to just like off with it and just be um, solo profit. Um, so, any other questions on that one? Um, it's sentimental. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. Um, so here's another way to look at it. When somebody gives you something, it's really the gesture, the intent, the sentiment, the fact that they were thinking of you, the occasion, the memory, how you felt when you got it. That, folks, is what matters. The thing doesn't. So you're... Throw it away or whatever. You 
don't have it to remember that moment. If, if it got burned in a fire, did that whole experience not happen? No. Did that little memory in your heart not happen? No, you still got that. But you don't have the orange knit hat that your grandmother made you when you were 15. And you're not wearing it. But she's gone. So you're like, I gotta mm -hmm. keep it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she's not here. Okay, that's it. What if, the, what if the hat was not here? You still remember your grandmother. You still remember that she made you things. Take a picture of it, maybe. Or um, cut, a little, cut a little piece of it out and put it in a little cute little frame on your dresser. There's so many things you can do with it without having it. Or probably the kindest <coughs> thing you can do, like you really honor your grandmother, donate it to <coughs> some poor soul who does not have a hat and is cold. You know? So just we have to detach the memory and the sentiment with the object. And I'm sure there are things that people have brought you, like, I don't know, a hostess gift or a birthday gift, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> Blah. And it's just taken up space somewhere. So, actually, a challenge for you. Before the weekend, tonight, tomorrow, find one of those things that is serving zero purpose whatsoever, is taking up space, you don't like it, you're never going to use it, wear it, whatever, and donate it. Just look at it for a moment and just say, well, that was so nice of Marilyn to give that to me. And she's the doll. And off it goes. <laughs> 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 somebody then to again take it out of the drawer where it's been for six years and give it to somebody kind of hand forward <coughs> yeah. try it try it try it try it I'm sure you have like things on top of closets and in the bowels of drawers and whatever and, like, and you keep moving it all right somebody said somebody said this one I think it was I'll fix it <laughs> no you won't likely you won't Likely what happens, I mean, you might be an exception. It's broken now, I'll fix it, I'll mend it, I'll reupholster it, that chair in the basement that's been there for 37 years, you're going to reupholster it, right? What ends up happening is that these projects take time. Who's got a lot of spare time? Anyone? Got a lot more time than you know what to do with? Right. And what these projects do is they pile up and they never get done. And similar to your fat clothes in your closet, that pile every time you walk by or that chair. What are you going to fix me? You said you were going to fix me. You're like, oh, you're failing again. Like there's true negative drag associated with that. You may not hear it, but it's saying it. And, you, and it's deep down somewhere you're feeling it. So, um, and it just adds to the whole feeling of hunger and frustration and disappointment. And, ugh. Um, did anybody read Marie Kondo's book, The, um, Ma the Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up? Yes, yeah, front row. All right, all right. It's a good read. She's a little extreme, I think. Um, she does things like when she comes home at the end of the day, she empties out her purse so her purse can rest. Oh, okay. Well, but she had a couple of things. You know, you, you just want to put all these things just kind of pick and choose. So one of the things she said is when something breaks or the button falls off or the elbow rips or the leg of the stool just completely falls off, it's kind of like the universe is saying, I'm done. I'm tired. This is the end of the road for me. It's been great. Hope I provided some service to you, but I'm done. So rather than try and like keep it on life support and you know artificially reattach things, you know just just accept that the universe is saying, did, I did my job. Check. Thank you very much. She also thanks everything. She thanks her purse at the end of the day when it's resting. Thank you for holding all my things. It's cute. It's cute. Um, so just 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 um, suggest you know, just a suggestion that when those things happen, just say ah. Oh, 
universe, okay, and toss that sweater away. You know, again, if it's like really, if it's done, it's done. Like I love going to clients' homes and seeing like their shoes are like worn to death. Like that's awesome. You you used your things and you use them to the extent that they could be used. Like that's awesome. But there's a time where you got to just say, you know, pull the plug. Yeah, yeah. Tap out. Ring the bell. Or say, hey, come over there. So, um, so consider thinking about that the next time. Don't start another project for yourself. Or if it's just a, you know, a little thing, donate it. But don't let it pile up. Just say, thank you first. Gotcha. Because you know what? You probably have about four other backups that you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, so that's where, you know, if we shift our belief, it's going to help develop some habits. Now, I want to now to kind of launch. Is there anything, was there any other one, any other example or something that, yes? They don't make them like they use. This is true. This is absolutely true. Yes. Like that brown, chunky colonial chair. By God, they don't make them like they used to. They made out of plastic and, you know, um, like also worn and like stuff like that. And it's, you're, you're right. But if, and, and the, and the reason for that, like it's the, it's the whole machine because you need to get iPhone version 8 even though your 5 works perfectly. It's just, it's, it's the way things are. Now if you're someone who you're happy with that brown chair and you are using it and you don't want one of those cheapy Ikea things, amen. But you got to be using it, not glomming on to it, warehousing it, hoarding it, saving it, staging it. You know, use it. And and the fact is they don't make them like they used to. So if it's no longer your taste or you don't have room for it, donate it, sell it, um, but, but move it on. If it's not serving you, your life, and your space today, you really have to consider, you know, saying farewell. Because, again, there's so much more life coming at you, so many more things coming at you, and you know, we can't be at capacity right now. So I want, yes, back of the room, yes. One thing to add to it, it's so, t I want to get rid of stuff. I want to sell it. I want to donate. It's so time consuming. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time. <coughs> okay, the time consuming I will grant you is selling. Yes. So selling. really if you're going to sell something, it, it should be of a value. Like it shouldn't be like a, a $3 thing. Because there is, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes in. You got to post. You got to, you know, monitor the post. They say they're going to come pick it up. They don't pick it up. Right. Now you're going to the next guy in line. It's time consuming. Yeah. So make sure it's of a value that is commensurate to the effort you're putting in. Yeah. Otherwise, donate it because donating yeah. feels great. You can I get a tax it. receipt. Yeah. You know, itemize it and deduct it from your taxes at the end of the year. Donating should be easy peasy. Yeah, you can pick up the phone. Hi, big brother. Hi, um, epilepsy. Hi, veterans. Yeah. Come on down. They'll pick it up. Um, so, but you know, and the thing is, once you gather these things, get them out. Like that day. If they become the pile that everybody's tripping over by the front door, then that's when it starts to feel like oh, this is a big fat project. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I had a computer hatch or a beautiful piece of furniture. I could not donate it. Like nobody would take it. So nobody would so take the computer hatch that she had. So heavy. And I ended up, I did end up giving it to someone, but mm -hmm. it was kind of like I sold it even though I didn't get too many for it. Yeah. Because it had to go through like lots of little people. I'll tell and you it was something. It's very hard to find something yes. that would take a big thing. Yes. Yeah. You know, Mission of Deeds is great, but they're picky. They're, they're great, but they're picky. Um, but you know what? Hey, put it at the end of the curb. I have been working with clients on like a random Tuesday afternoon. We put a bunch of stuff down by the curb. We march up. We go into the house. We look out the window. Half of it's gone. Like what? I mean, the curb goes. But end of the end of the driveway, you'd be surprised. You know these like skirts, they all know what day trash day is in every town, and they just go and it's gone. Yeah, they don't get to call me. Yeah, very happy. So I wanted to share with.
with you just a couple of things that like the five keys to simplify. Um, the why is more important than how. Like we all know you declutter and you take stuff out and blah 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 blah. But what's gonna make it stick? And what's gonna really make you finish it and, and go on to the next thing? And you really have to have a why, like I'm sick and tired of looking at this mudroom when people come in and we're just tripping over it. Or, you know, I want to I want to be a more responsible citizen. Like, maybe that's your why. You know, I want to stop squandering and wasting and, and hoarding and <coughs> glomming on to things when, when there are so many people in need. Um, maybe your why is, I just, you know, I'm into feng shui and I just want my, my space to be clear. I, I want the good chi to be able to flow. Um, I, I just want to have, I want my home to be a, a haven where I am restored and rejuvenated and you know, revived after all the craziness I, I encounter out in the world every day. And I need that to be, you know, clear and, and, and calm and not frustrating and distracting. Um, they say, like, when, um, feng shui people, when your attic is full, mm -hmm. and I know this for a fact, because this cute little um, handyman guy I know, he's like, oh, I think you've got to come to my house. My attic is killing me. Because he walks into his house and he immediately feels like this. Because his wife's got all this stuff jammed up in the attic. And he, he feels it. So when he comes home, he doesn't feel like, ah, he feels like this. And they say when your basement is cluttered and full, that it's almost like, you know, you've got a stomach ache or your, di you know, your, your, your digestive system is, you know, it's all So like these things... And again, it's sort of like, you know, the negative, you know, the piles on the floor. You didn't fix me. You said you were going to fix me. Like all that kind of stuff. It, it matters. It adds up. And, and you feel it. You may not realize it, but you feel it. So think about your why. Like what is, what is you know, um, spearheading your wish to declutter and have a more simplified life? Less is not nothing. People are like, what do you like? Do you want me to be a minimalist and like a monk and like have this austere existence with like a pencil and a cup? <laughs> no! <laughs> no. So less is not nothing. You just have to kind of figure out what's what's enough for you and your family. Um, is it a room full of pink Barbie plastic? <laughs> You know? <laughs> um, or is it something where, you know, gee, maybe maybe there is something to that study and that kids will play with less things more fully. Um, and, you know, moms, they always, uh, there's a lot of anguish when I'm working with moms and then the kids are at school and they're like, oh, they're going to come home, they're going to do a nutty. I mean, it's just going to be all hell's going to break loose. They're going to want to know where their, like, pocket pal is. And, all that. and we take, and we clear, and then I get an email that evening. They didn't notice a thing. I told them I was cleaning, not organizing. And they, you know, I know what their favorite books are, and they were actually able to find them on the bookcase. And, you know, I think we, we project what we think they're going to feel like. The mom always feels worse than the kids do. <laughs> always. Until it's sort of proven. And we think that our kids <clears throat> need more and bigger and best and newest. And honestly, they don't. And I'm going to show you a little video in, in just a moment that is going to drive that home. Um, it's not a race. There's not a starting gun and a starting line and a finish. Simplifying, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. It's kind of a way of life. And, um, you know, it's, it's slow and steady change, and that's what becomes sustainable. It's not just a flurry and then boom, boom, done. I'm organized. Um, so, you know, and you don't want to compare yourself to anybody. Just Take little bites. I think we were talking about the little bites. Um, and that's where we go to the next one. Small progress. Celebrate 
every little thing that you do. Like, oh my god, junk drawer is now reclaimed and it's functioning. Like, that's huge. Or the medicine chest, all right? All the toxic, expired, dangerous medicine is out of there. And I will bet my soul that there is in there. Um, so just take little steps. It's sort of like if you're going to run a marathon, right? On day one, are you running 26 miles? Nuh-uh. You're like maybe doing a half a mile and then falling down crying. So take little steps and celebrate every little step. Sometimes just 15 minutes, like legit, the kids are sleeping or, you know, they're out uh, at a game. Set the timer for 15 minutes and tackle something. And maybe it's just shoes or maybe whatever it is. And then you get some momentum. Then you start building what I call the chuck muscle. <laughs> chuck it. Yeah. When in doubt, chuck it out. <laughs> so, you know, you start getting some success and then, you know, some of your... You know, sister comes up and I'm like, oh my god, your eyelid looks so good. So you're like, yeah, it's in the fun. <laughs> and here's my fave. Holding on is harder to let go. If you're holding on to all this stuff, and it's reminding you that you're not using it, and it's taking up space for stuff that really matters, that's every day. Holding on is hard. You're holding on every day. You let go just once. Bye bye. <laughs> Big brother, come pick it up. You know, uh, yard sale, whatever. So letting go is so much easier than holding on. And we just think it. We think that the letting go is so hard. It's not. It's just once. Any questions on the keys to some kind? <laughs> What do you get when you simplify? Ah, clarity. No, really, your space becomes clear. You become clear. You get to see who and what is really important. Like maybe, maybe you're decluttering some of those kind of toxic relationships, right? The negative Nancy, the one who brings nothing to the table but just negative energy. Maybe it's time to shake Nancy. You know, decluttering things like that. Or, um, so just clarity. And sometimes you like overcommit yourself and like you're on this board and that board, you're doing that for that, 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 that. And you sort of lost a sense of what really fulfills you and what you enjoy because it's so cluttered with so many obligations and you're not even able to get home at a decent hour most nights because you're going to all these committee meetings. Simplify, figure out what, what feeds me, what feeds my soul, what makes me happy. And, and chase those types of things. Less of them, but chase them. And, and you know, get clear on the, on the things that don't. Um, freer space, you know, definitely in your home, um, physical, your bedroom, your, your office, it's a, a haven where you can unplug and restore, and you're surrounded by things that are <coughs> useful. Uh, oh, health, health, well, um, when I sort of dumbed down my life, I, I became healthier. Like, it's true. And there are two other um, good books that you might want to read about people who have had sort of these situations where um, downshifting their life brought better health. And one is Soulful Simplicity by Courtney Carver. She's amazing. Um, and the other is Thrive by Ariana Huffington. Huffington Post. Uh, if anyone's read that? I open. Thrive. T H R I V E. And then presence. You know, you're no longer just sort of floating through the day, kind of in the backseat of your life with stuff just happening at you. And, you know, you're not living a life on purpose. It's just all sort of like, bleh. Get in the front seat. Get present. And the clearer you are and the more you declutter your world, your life, your, your home, everything, the more present you are. And, and I found that, that I was able to be much more present for my mother, who was alone after my dad passed in the hospital. Like, I was really able to be present for her. And it, it made a world of difference. Uh, relationships. Um, you're no longer, I don't know, arguing about this kind of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, 
friction that happens in a household when, you know, this kind of stuff piles up. And, and a lot of times, too, like the place is like, er, not the way you want it to have people over. And sometimes people can actually kind of start, start to get a little bit smaller on their socializing. And, you know, gee, we never go over to Deb's house. Oh, what's that all about? You know, but, you know, the more you kind of take control of that stuff and get proud and, you know, it, it, can, it can definitely affect relationships. Joy. Joy. So underrated and so important. Um, you know, you, you start really focusing on the things of joy. Again, like the, the sort of things, like if you're going to spend all your time volunteering, what is it that really feeds your soul? And appreciation. It's amazing when you start reducing the things around you and the things in your life, how much you realize you appreciate the things that have sort of risen to the top. Sometimes I'll work with a client and they're just like, ah, stuff all over the wall, all over the wall, like picture, pictures, pictures from when the kids were, you know, one up until they're now in college. And, and if we just sort of cherry pick a few, maybe you consider that you have a gallery and you rotate your pictures, but don't have them all up at once. Because the eye can never rest on one and say, like, oh my god, that one of her in the red dress in the, in the forest, that's a beautiful picture. So you start to appreciate things more. When the big treadmill's out of the bedroom, like you start appreciating the space, and maybe you have a chair where you actually can sit and read. So those are some of the upsides and bonuses to simplifying. Now, this is where technology might get a little, <coughs> I think I have to go back here. So I want to play a video, and here it is. Let's see if I can do this. It's in Spanish, but there are subtitles. <laughs> it's really good. And if you speak Spanish, you think I can do this. Bueno, vamos a escribir la carta a los Reyes Magos. ¿Sabéis ya lo que vais a pedir? Sí. 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 Now you write a letter to your parents. What do you want for Christmas? 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 Quiero que estés más tiempo conmigo, que hagamos más experimentos en casa, que nos hagáis un poco más de caso. Me gustaría que cenarais más con nosotros. Quiero que nos hagáis cosquillas y que les veamos un momento. Quiero que estemos un día... No puedo. Quiero jugar, mamá. Que juegues conmigo, vaquero. Quiero jugar más al fútbol conmigo. ¿Os sorprende que os pidan esto para Navidad? Pues no, la verdad es que no nos sorprende. A mí no. Tienen demasiado juguetes siempre. Too many toys. El sentimiento de tratar de... Sustituir. Sustituir. Porque no hay ese pequeño vacío con un juguete que les... Pasado el, todo el tiempo que tenemos al máximo con nuestros hijos. Sí. Pensa que tú quieres darles todo lo mejor y lo mejor es el, eres tú. Si lo está escribiendo es porque lo necesita, ¿no? Ajá. Si solo pudieras enviar una de las dos cartas... You can only send one of those letters to Santa or to your parents. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know if I'm going to do something that's fantastic.
I mean, it's so true. We think they need everything. We think they do. We give them all the plastic and all that stuff. We're trying to be great parents. Our intentions are so good. And the world, society, manufacturers are telling us, you need to give your kids this for them to be happy. And it, it's just not true. It's just not. So, um...
You look terrified. <laughs> you can do it with shoes too. I know exactly which friends are going to be not the same thing. But you know what? It's, tell, it's sending you the message. It's saying, like, if you're, especially if your closet is like jammed and you're like wedging stuff in, your hands are all poking out, and everything breaks. What does it mean? Give it, give it room to breathe. My closet. I love my closet so much. I took the doors off. Legit. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I have everything color coordinated too. Um, the good thing about that, though, seriously, like if I wanted to wear like a dark gray shirt, a gray shirt tonight, I was just kind of feeling gray. I don't have to go through my whole closet. I go right here, gray. It's so awesome. Awesome. You can also do this with shoes, though. Point all your shoes, toes out. And when you legit wear them, put a uh, toe in, you'll get the same message. Get rid of me. Give me to somebody who can use me. I'm just, I'm just languishing here. All right. So, um, and then my most favorite saying, which I kind of said at the beginning, it's not about getting rid of stuff. It's about making space for the stuff that matters. Questions, chat, like real life, real world situations that you're wrestling with, or successes like Miss Hanger test. And that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just believe it. Because I went from a big house into a whole home. So I had, I had to download stuff. But my yeah. clothes were the most that I wasn't going to download. I made a closet out of the laundry room, put on my clothes in my closet. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. retro bit. Yeah. yeah, I did. I retro bit. Now it's like, wow, I can't believe all the space that I have. Mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. I went through my clothes after reading uh, the Marie Kondo book. And I did hold, she's supposed to hold everything up and be like, do you give me joy? And I did, and it was like, <laughs> yeah. but I really, I was like, no, you don't. And I got rid of probably 80% of my clothes. And I can do it again. <laughs> Yeah, it's a process. It's not like, oh, poop, unorganized, end of story, close the book, done. Yeah, keep doing it. You know, start of the year is a great time to kind of look at those things. And I don't, even, I don't even separate seasonal anymore. I used to do that. I used to have to bin under the bed, pull it out, and like, okay, spring and summer and winter fall. I don't do that. Everything's in my closet right now. It's just like, a who, who needs just being paralyzed? First thing in the morning, like, oh, crap. Just looking at this, like, sea of stuff, I'm like, you know, what am I going to wear? Like, just reduce your choices, just like the playroom, and just like the six colanders and strainers. Reduce your choices. You know what you're wearing anyhow. You know what you love. You know, so, rock it. Yes, enjoy and she was literally paralyzed. Like she could not function. I had to sit in the kitchen and say, "You have 12 batches. Pick your three favorite." Yes. And I and I had to do that with everything, and it was. I felt bad for it because it was just so overwhelming. Right. But and they didn't miss it. Like they did in this. And things are getting flipped, and food is getting served, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing that the, 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 the other thing is flip side of the it's expensive. I can't get rid of it. Is I it was inexpensive. So again, too much of a good thing. It, it doesn't matter. The price is irrelevant because that happened in the price. Does it bring me value? Does it serve me, my life, and my space today? Like my Tomorrow, not Sunday. Today. <coughs> Trust me, in this world, you're always going to be able to get one if you need one. Don't worry. Don't worry. I think add to cart is the three most, um, like, the, the words that give you that feeling of, mm. it used to be, I love you. It's now add to cart. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Any other situations, questions, um, successes? Yes. I probably need more. Hey, okay. Do you anybody have that problem? Specifically, what? I, I bought a desk and a cabinet with a pile cabinet. <laughs> Everything's just piled on top of them, and I walk by it every day. And yes. I feel like I need a week. 
to go through every single thing to, to organize it or to file it or to shred it or, you know, I'm afraid to throw away something important. Okay. So, um, the five seconds will, will eliminate that from this point forward. But you do. Paperwork is it's one of the most labor-intensive parts of, of work that I do with my clients. But, you know, if you have it, you got to look through it. You know, you can't just sweep it all off into a dumpster because, you know, there will be something that's important. Like, oh, there goes the passport or, oh, you know, something like that. I found three passports in, in a home. Uh, I also found $460 worth of gift cards in one day organizing the club lines. So you do need to invest the time. Like, you know, maybe maybe you just, and, and here it is, you schedule it. Like, if you, you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. So you schedule one hour every weekend, and you just go up there with your cup of tea or your favorite coffee or whatever, and you just barricade your people who don't even talk to me. I got an appointment here. And you go through a little bit of a drawer at a time. And um, you can take shredding to Staples. They'll do it for 99 cents a pound. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Who, need, who has time to go, rah, 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 and it gets jammed. You stick the butter knife in, and then everything falls out. And, it, and then it overheats, and it has to rest. No, no time for that. So take little bites. Regain control. And from this point forward, five seconds. Five seconds, I'm not going to drop it. In ten minutes, I'm going to go through it. The other thing is, I really encourage people to do as much online. If you have those recurring bills, and they're you know, the cable bill, and the same thing, get it, do it on a day, get it done, um, all those types of things. <coughs> Manual, if you, get, if, yeah, if you can get it online, do not keep it. Those big, fat manuals with your washer and your TV and your all that kind of stupid stuff. You, first of all, when was the last time you, anyone, did anyone, has anyone referenced one of their appliance manuals in the last five years? You have not. Could you have found it online? How long did it take you to find this manual? You know, think about what's serving you in your life today, in your space today. Can I find it elsewhere? I don't have to warehouse. We, we become such a different world than we were even like, like my first job, I went to the bank every Saturday morning, stood in line with the rest of the town of Marblehead, and we cashed our checks these days. On the phone, direct deposit. So the world has changed. We don't need to hang on and archive all these documents like we used to. I don't keep my bank statement. If I, if I need a bank statement, I'll just go online, march down to the bank, and they'll print it out for me. I'm not keeping seven years' bank statements. So think about where else you can get it. Um, but yeah. Paperwork is, 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 is yeah. And the other thing you might want to try, because that whole big desk is this big horizontal service, just saying, put stuff on me, literally have a basket, a basket, preferably no longer, no bigger than that, so that if you do have to drop and run, it'll never get past that. And like, just make a promise to yourself. Like, I'm not going through this next year, spending an hour every weekend I'm not going to do it because I'm, I've got better things to do with my time. So I'm going to limit myself to those what if times in a basket this big to drop and then just stay on top of it. But it's, it's going to be a little painful. Hi. This is a different kind of paperwork, but what about children's work that comes home? Three kids, so, you know, everything is special. Yeah. <laughs> and Rembrandt. I have Rubbermaid bins filled with my older kids, and I'm not, you know, my daughter's bringing stuff home. And how, mm -hmm. how do you decide what to keep? Okay. What to, how to store it? Take a picture. Oh. Taking a picture is great, but here's, here's the thing you have to say the little mantra in your head. When everything is special, nothing is special. Mm -hmm. 
It, there's nothing special in there. That is just a boatload of paper. Like, the special stuff, you want the cream to rise to the top. You want the, like, the super, super special. So every homework and every spelling thing, like, it's, it's cuckoo. And I will tell you, you are going to end up with those. Your child will not want that. Because everybody thinks, oh, Johnny and Sally, they're going to totally want those. And as soon as they get their apartment, not happening. It's so sad. So when everything is special, nothing is special. So totally cherry pick. Have, like, and limit yourself to a very small flat bin. Flat bin, like maybe that big. You know? And that, that is preferably elementary school. But if you have to break it up by, by you know, things. But really think about the super duper special stuff. And and sometimes when they come home with stuff, like the gallery thing is fun. Like you, you dedicate a wall, and this is the gallery this week. And then the gallery owners change it for next week. And just, you know, it's and, and the other thing is it's made of paper. And paper is not made, meant to last. Paper, you know, goes, uh, it deteriorates. So, um, yeah, just, uh, uh, it's hard. It's hard. We did something, I do a high school kids this year. I mean, now, in the past year, in June, we did something that I brought from a friend. We have a fighter pit outside. And at the last day of school, they went through all their papers. And I they didn't pick out what they wanted to keep. And I took out the things. And then we had a big bonfire. I love that. Loved it. Did you hear that? The bonfire at the end of school? The kids and mom and dad picked out the things from that whole school year that they truly, truly wanted to keep. And then they had fun. And they did a bonfire. Of all the things that was great, but you know, job done. Right. Did even like their math books and stuff. They were like, come on, math books. Like, You know what I do with kids too, which is kind of fun, is if they've got like a bunch of stuffed animals and they're like, like I don't know, I don't know. Um, so what we do is we um, we group them either by color or like here's all the bears and here's all the squirrels and here's all the you know whatever cats, and then pick your favorite, pick your total favorite, maybe pick two, and then the rest blindfold. I stand there with a big tub. And they throw, and anything that lands in the tub stays. <laughs> oh, you missed that one. <laughs> that you can sell your wedding dress? <laughs> your wedding dress? Mm -hmm. I think there are, and a, there's another thing that they do with wedding dresses, and they make what's called angel gowns for stillborn babies in hospitals. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's called like angel gowns or something like that. I think the yeah, angel gowns. Like, love that. You just send it off. Um, I'm not sure about the, but has anybody heard about a, a wedding gown place? Right, because they they figure that like you know kids have been like you know so but you know what they did their job right they oh I want to yeah yeah because it's you yeah Oh my god, the library takes a yeah. right. yeah. sale. <laughs> yes. The Lovekin Lit Library. And most libraries will have that. Um, absolutely. Here's the book boxes you can donate, but you know, Salvation Army and all those other places. Um, I've, I've, I've donated them. Do you guys take textbooks? <coughs> 
At the library, in the, in the back, we have donation bins that go to Good Hearted Books, and we do get credit money for what's Perfect. donated. So Perfect. that's the library. So it's doing good. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. you guys have been awesome. I love, love, love spending the evening with you. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I don't, I don't send it anymore. Once a month email with tips and suggestions and before and after photos. There are three clipboards up here. Feel free to sign up um, if that's something you'd like. And um, if I can ever help you know how to reach me. I've got enough of my swag stuff, right? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.